SS Snipewolf is one of the biggest creators on the internet. Her videos constantly feature on YouTube's front page, and millions consume her content daily. Her YouTube journey spans more than a decade, winning multiple awards and becoming one of YouTube's favourite creators. However, behind the seemingly innocent facade are years of controversy that have forced her into social isolation. The Snipe Wolf story is a turbulent tale, it's been well documented and told many times. So how does she continue to thrive when her existence is a total lie? Imagine working so hard on something, like putting your whole life, devoting your whole life to it, and people just shoot you down saying, no, it's not yours, you didn't do that. They don't give you the credit for it. What happened to the boosted Overwatch player? It's all just vanished into like bland BuzzFeed style fluff pieces. She hasn't tried to better herself over all of these years. If she didn't criticize other women relentlessly for doing these things, I don't think anyone would care that she does. No job. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's going out her way to remove all these videos by me, basically just to cover up the truth. It really hurts my image and how other people perceive me. I'm the bad guy, of course, of course. I'm going to show everybody in the world that you're alive. I'm a big nerd actually, like I play video games all day, I play Metal Gear, Call of Duty, like literally all day, like at least six hours a day. The SS Snipe Wolf brand was born in January 2013. Leah's early content was deeply rooted in the gaming world. Black Ops 2 gameplay and commentaries were a common sight, but she also created videos about Metal Gear Solid, which inspired her channel's namesake. However, SS Snipe Wolf was not the first attempt at creating an online brand. What came before has seemingly been erased from history, but as we all know, nothing is ever truly lost. Sexy Sexy Sniper is a name that has been gone for more than a decade. It was the precursor for SS Snipe Wolf, the SS a tribute to her earlier exploits and not an indication of political affiliations. I hope. From the few archived videos that still exist, it's clear there was a more adult side to her content. Honestly, this book made me squirt so hard I thought I was pissing. <laughs> Wait, what? <coughs> Moving on. Most of these archived videos are from the end of 2012, and her target audience was very clear. But the Sexy Sexy Sniper era began in 2010, and Leah had built a poor reputation within certain communities. Fellow creators often demeaned her character, and she wasn't shy from responding. These tweets are still public, and are an interesting insight into her behaviour more than a decade ago. Good lord, who is this beautiful, semi-glass nerdy but hot girl? What is your name? I'm Leah. Yeah, you look pretty young. You look, I'm gonna guess, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna guess your age, your height, and your weight. 23? No. Younger or older? A lot younger. I really messed that up. <laughs> You're not, are you legal? Yeah. <laughs> She's 18, 19. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already gonna get arrested. There's guys who look like they kick the shit out of me. This interview is very uncomfortable to listen to. A 19 year old Leah was attending her first San Diego Comic Con, and this guy from the Girls and Corpses magazine was asking some very suspect questions. However, this interaction establishes the credibility of Leah's earlier YouTube career. Do you have a website or anything? Um, I have a YouTube. It's Sexy Sexy Sniper. I have like gameplay and stuff and I do vlogs. The Sexy Sexy Sniper channel saw Leah command at least 30,000 subscribers before she switched to Sniper Wolf. Her transition was almost like for like, and she continued growing her online presence. Holy shit! No! She also sold prints of her cosplays on a very primitive marketplace website. She may have dropped the sexy from her name, but that didn't change her demographics. I don't think that was the answer everyone was looking for. Oh, yeah. She marketed herself as a girl gamer, when it was still uncommon for women to be seen as gamers. As the self-described COD goddess, the quality of the gameplay in her commentaries caught the attention of many, as did her looks, ending the year with more than 200,000 subscribers. However, she didn't do this without a helping hand, and towards the middle of 2013, she targeted her direct competition 
which proved to be the catalyst for her career's growth. What's up, Drama Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. Ladies and gentlemen, is the cat fight of the COD community upon us? Leah's first major controversy under the Sniper Wolf brand saw her expose someone she had supposedly known for some time. Girl Gone Gamer was another YouTuber with very similar content to Leah, but with a much larger slice of the girl gamer market. As you guys have seen on my videos, I get literally at least 10 comments in a video asking me 1v1 Girl Gone Gamer. I decided to make this video today because she actually unfollowed me off Twitter and blocked me because I asked for a 1v1. Raya's rejection of Leah's challenge, blocking her on Twitter, resulted in Leah aiming for the authenticity of Raya's channel. She doesn't actually get her gameplays. And there have been hundreds of comments on my videos about how she's not the one playing. Thousands of her subscribers asked her to do a live commentary. Well, because she's a gamer, isn't she? Hence, Girl Gone Gamer. And after 400,000, she hasn't even done a live commentary? People told me that I was fake and I wasn't the one getting my gameplays. My mic was broken at the time and you know what I did? I went out and got a headset and a camera and I did several live commentaries for you guys. And she ended up doing a live commentary finally after like 400k, which me and a lot of people knew obviously was fake. Leah positioned herself as the real gamer, providing those who watched the video an alternative to Rare. For most, there was no reason to dispute her charges. The transition from one girl gamer to another was effortless. Hey guys, what's up? First of all, I wanted to thank all of you guys for helping me hit 50k subscribers, which is crazy and huge and I just wanted to say you guys are all awesome and thank you. So yesterday I posted a video called The Truth About Girl Gone Gamer, which actually got a lot more attention than I would have ever thought and it seemed to cause a war between the fanboys. Most of Leah's evidence was based on her testimony and speculative opinion. However, the way she presented her arguments was convincing enough for most people to give her the benefit of the doubt. 10 days after the two videos about Girl Gone Gamer, she had grown from 48,000 subscribers to just under 73,000. Two weeks later, she surpassed 100,000, doubling the size of her audience. Raya's lack of response also helped. To this day, there is still no clear proof that the gameplay wasn't hers. Since then, both creators have had very divergent careers. Snipewolf is one of the biggest YouTube creators, with tens of millions of followers and frequent appearances on the curated trending section. Raya took a slightly different path, and is now a sex and relationship educator, with a sex education podcast on Spotify. That's it for the news today, Drum Alert Nation now over 12,000 subscribers. The Snipewolf train had left the station and 200,000 subscribers in the first year is a commendable achievement. Her takedown of arguably her only competition opened the floodgates for growth, and she took the opportunity with both hands. However, as frequently documented, young people who gain a large platform within a short time usually exhibit behavioural issues that cause problems. Leah was no different. In late 2013, she crossed an individual who would be a persistent irritation over the coming years. She was making fun of her fans. What a shameful, despicable human being you are. Enigma Hood was a very peculiar individual. He's someone who, under normal circumstances, would be seen as a degenerate who should be ignored. Leah's actions inevitably led to her looking rather silly, but their feud began a year earlier when Enigma Hood responded to one of Leah's sexy, sexy sniper videos. Hey guys, it's Enigma Hood. And today I want to talk about this YouTuber. Um, she goes by the name Sexy Sexy Sniper, uh, but her she her name is Leah. You know, she makes mostly stupid videos talking about absolutely nothing, but uh, the real draw to her channel are her boobs. Just recently, she made a video that really uh, annoyed me, that really pissed me off, because she was essentially insulting her fans. Enigma Hood provides commentary about what she says using clips from her video which was arguably fair use of the content. However, she didn't see it this way, and decided the best action was filing a DMCA takedown. SS Sniper Wolf, aka Sexy Sexy Sniper, or whatever the hell she wants to call herself, has censored one of my videos. She has filed a false DMCA against my video, which was criticizing her video 
Uh, Facebook creepers. Sniper Wolf was copyright striking people before it was popular, and Enigma Hood's video was genuine criticism of her comments, so taking it down was an attempt to suppress it. Why she did so was unknown. The only reason I could conceive is her trying to distance the Sniper Wolf brand from her previous content protecting her image. However, he filed a valid counter notice that Leah did not protest, restoring the video. In response, Enigma Hood went on the offensive. You fucking Indian <laughs> bitch. How dare you disrespect at SS Sniper Wolf, you c Well, that's a mouthful. SS Sniper Wolf has filed a second DMCA against my video, SS Sniper Wolf is a racist. So she maliciously filed this DMCA for the sole purpose of trying to censor me. His efforts ultimately produced a reaction, and Leah decided to talk about him in a video describing him as a nameless hater. Today's hater spotlight is on this guy who has dedicated countless hours to making videos on every little thing I do. He pretty much wears nothing but a hoodie, puts a hood over his face, and makes vlogs crying about every little thing he doesn't like. He made a video using my content, he re-uploaded my video and essentially just insulted me over it, and I really don't like people using my content without permission, especially if it's in a negative way, but if it's in a positive way and you ask me first, it's fine, go for it. So I reported his video on YouTube for copyright and he made another butthurt video saying I filed a false copyright claim and that he was entitled to use my content. One of my subscribers tweeted him, insulting him, and I guess I had something racist in it. And he thought I favorited it when I went back and looked up the tweet. I had never favorited it in the first place, so I'm not sure what happened right there and I don't know why he was so mad. <laughs> As with most Snipe Wolf story times, there's a long monologue and very little evidence to support her anecdotes. At the time, I'm sure those watching didn't care too much about what she was saying, but in reflection, it does raise some concerns about her character. More so, the accuracy of her story and credibility as narrator. Her framing of Enigma Hood's video she tried to take down was insincere. It was much more than re-uploading her content. She also feigned ignorance towards liking a comment that included an obscene array of derogatory language, despite Enigma Hood's screenshot of her doing so. Then she mocked Enigma Hood's intention to seek legal advice. This guy wants to sue me over the internet, and that's just a supreme level of butthurt. You want to sue someone over the internet that you stalk and harass and just talk shit to and make a bunch of videos about, I'm sure that would go very well on your behalf. The fact Leia gave Enigma Hood any sort of attention was peculiar in itself, but it would be wrong to consider Enigma Hood a martyr because some of his comments are completely unhinged. This was a time when she was riding on the coattails of the destruction of one of her biggest competitors. Why she saw the need to respond to a literal nobody and open herself up to scrutiny is confusing, but she did show her hand, which would eventually come back to bite her. Twenty fourteen through twenty fifteen was seemingly straightforward, eventually surpassing one million subscribers in twenty fifteen and gaining another million within the same year. She was expanding and rising the ranks of YouTube's gaming community, but her content also changed. You didn't guess it. You. I knew what they were. No, you didn't. You did it. You would have guessed something. I felt the blue blind. No. Put like right here. Felt the blue blind. It wasn't until 2016 that she faced significant scrutiny. Coincidentally, the time commentary gained relevance. In June 2016, a 15-year-old creator named Herotic uploaded a video titled SS Snipe Wolf The Manipulator, wherein he discusses the trend of Leah breaking up with Sausage, suggesting that they were doing it for views. Herotic claimed there was proof they were married, revealing public records showing how they purchased their house as husband and wife. His opinion was based on this information. Two days later, he released another video. Well, as the sniper wolf saw Scarce's video where he he reported on my video, and she threatened to sue Scarce. You've got to delete your video because as the sniper wolf will probably take down your video and probably get you a strike on the channel. Now, obviously, my video is still up, so it seems like as the sniper wolf hasn't really taken any action against my video. After threatening to sue Scarce, indicating her intent to take down Herotic's video, two weeks would pass. I said I'd drop it. I said I'd, I'd completely finish the whole thing. I I said, you know, basically I said, Sniper Wolf, you win this time. You win. 
Alright, you, you've gotten away. But then she had the audacity to then strike my video, block it worldwide. Leah was true to her word, using her network full screen to block the video worldwide. I apparently used a copyrighted image as a thumbnail and the photographer wasn't happy with that. The photographer got paid to, to, to take the photo. So I don't exactly see why the photographer will be angry with anyone using the photo. Surely it would be Sniper Wolf herself who would be angry. Her copyright claim was valid because the thumbnail is her material. However, she intended to suppress the video. She admitted this in conversations with Skurse. Her complaints about privacy and suggesting that Herotic incited harassment towards her points to another possible route she took. She may have moved to block the video because she had originally filed a privacy complaint. Maybe that was rejected. Regardless, she took down a video criticizing her because she didn't like it, not because of copyright infringement. She was threatening litigation against other smaller creators. The fact that a grown man went to an actual lawyer to cry about his internet issues with a girl is, is just beyond hilarious to me. Following her tussle with Herotic, she was immediately in drama with someone else. SS Snipe Wolf had become a very popular topic on the other side of the internet, prompting Lear to contact the hub to remove all videos using her brand for views. She released a video stating this, and reiterated that she had never participated in the sex work industry. That is not me. It is a girl called Kalita. She's a cam girl. I will admit, we do look alike, but there are a lot of differences. She used to have a Twitter, but she actually deleted it after people started finding her videos and thought it was me. I know this is getting her videos more views, and she's making more money off of it because people think it's me and people are watching her videos. So I think she's just playing it off as she is as a sniper wolf impersonator. Because she's getting money! After targeting this girl, suggesting that she was purposefully capitalizing on Leah's brand, she confusingly switches her tone, stating that the girl wasn't uploading these videos. I mean, she can do whatever she wants. She's not advertising it as, as a sniper wolf porn, but people are re-uploading her videos, titling it as a sniper wolf porno. Leah claims there was no way to contact the girl because she had deleted her Twitter account. However, another creator named Supos could contact her on Twitter. Unsurprisingly, she wasn't thrilled with her betrayal. So not only was she the target of Leah's frustration, she wasn't even impersonating her whatsoever. This could have easily been fixed. Leah could have clarified the situation in her video, or take it down altogether. She chose neither options, and a week later, she attacked the girl she wrongfully accused and misrepresented. The reason I'm making this video is because this girl is like Taylor Swift level snake. Yes. <laughs> she is playing the victim harder than Keemstar is, and it is in the worst possible way. Her job is literally sitting in front of a camera for like an hour, couple hours a day, playing with yourself. <laughs> That is literally their job. Seriously. Girl, the only medical bills you are paying is for that nose, the lips, the tits, and the ass. You say I'm not confident with my body, but I didn't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to look like this. She's putting herself on a pedestal. She is much more valuable and successful because she doesn't need to use her body for views. Although others will disagree. The general issue here is how dishonest she is. Erotic pointing out the hypocrisy of her comments, considering their recent altercation. She found the video and she was really upset with it, saying that I slandered her, defamed her, used her pictures without permission, talked about her in my video without permission, and threatened to take down the video, strike my channel, sue me. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Nothing. But wait a minute, didn't 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 Snipe Wolf do that to me? Didn't she threatened to take legal action, didn't she attempt to take down my video? Which, by the way, if you're watching, well done, you, you, you succeeded with that. The middle of 2016 was shaping up to be a pretty busy year for Leah. She needed a win, so she turned back the clock and decided to engage with someone who had disappeared into the abyss of irrelevancy. What's up guys? Today we are doing a different kind of video, but it's super exciting because I've been wanting to do this for a while now. I don't know why I've never done it before. I actually can't wait to do this video. He's been stalking me for the past two years or so, maybe more, almost three years. I have him blocked on everything, but he still continues to watch my videos, stalk me, and make response videos talking shit about me. He's a little obsessed. This video stinks of retribution. There's a clear goal that isn't exactly subtle. Enigma Hood's incessant brigading of Leah was enough to get under her skin despite most of the videos he made getting very little attention. She wanted to hit him hard, and she set herself up for the eventual kill shot. 
A couple years ago, he re-uploaded one of my videos and you can't just take somebody else's content and re-upload it and monetize it. So I filed the copyright claim with YouTube trying to take it down. And in the copyright process, I got his real name. And of course I Googled his name and it turns out he is a registered sex offender. He's 30 something years old, lives with his parents still, makes YouTube videos with a hood on. Now you know what kind of person this guy is. It's a pretty loaded video. She admits to using the copyright system to take down Enigma Hood's video back in 2013 receiving his personal information as a result of him successfully appealing it. Also an admission that she was indeed Sexy Sexy Sniper. She supposedly used that information to look him up where she supposedly stumbled across his status on the registry. So SS Sniper Wolf has decided to slander my name by accusing me of being a sex offender. You are not allowed to accuse someone of a criminal offense and then paint them as a criminal, as a sex offender, one of the most odious and repugnant crimes in the world. Enigma Hood is a degenerate. That's a fact. I have no issue with her dunking on him for the outlandish statements and deranged videos he has made on certain topics. However, somehow lowering herself below him is a truly remarkable feat. Despite showing how much of a freak he is, it doesn't take away from the fact that she was wrong. She misused the copyright system, using the information gathered from Enigma's appeal for unjustifiable reasons. She comes across as vindictive, her comments broadcast to millions are very select and designed to impact him socially. It's hard to defend Enigma Hood, but it's Leah's fault for victimizing him in this scenario. I am seriously considering to sue her. Enigma Hood eventually filed a defamation lawsuit against Leah, Sausage, her network, and Google in 2017. The case was put before a judge where all the named defendants filed a motion to dismiss. Google and Fullscreen were dismissed with ease because Google can't be held liable for defamatory comments made on their platforms, and there was no allegation made against Fullscreen. However, to reject Leah and Sausage's motion to dismiss, Enigma Hood had to satisfy a three-pronged effects test to contest the motion to dismiss based on their lack of personal jurisdiction. He succeeded in the first two. Leah had intentionally defamed him, and New Jersey was where he suffered most of the harm from doing so. However, he also had to prove that Leah had specifically targeted his home state. He couldn't do that. There was no proof that Leah's comments reached anyone in New Jersey, nor could he prove that her comments affected anyone other than himself. Despite the general reach of Leah's audience, he couldn't connect them to the state, so the case was dismissed without prejudice. He could try again if he wanted. He never did, and her video is still up to this day. Not so soon after her video about Enigma Hood, another degenerate, for other reasons, decided to release a video documenting the history of SS Sniper Wolf. The terminal grave robber Michael McCrudden decided it was time for Leah to get her own before they were famous, and documented the early shenanigans of Leah's YouTube career. However, according to Leah, this depiction of her was wrong, and she wasn't so happy about how she was portrayed. She saw this as another opportunity for content and decided to release her reaction. Before YouTube videos touch my body challenge, show me your tits and she- Oh, you skipped the actual gameplay though. It would clock in millions of views. I already know he's gonna use just the most sexual pictures possible because views and money. Before Sniper Wolf would collaborate with Rice Gum, Face Adapt, Face Sensor, and would get talked about by the YouTube- Why does he make it seem like that I collabed with people to get bigger? That's what Sausage said when he watched this video. He was like, he made it seem like, oh, she collabed with whoever just to get bigger. I rarely ever collab with people. The only people I collab with are people I'm friends with. I'm not like the type of YouTuber that just collabs with anybody I can. I had more subscribers than Rice Gum, Adapt and censor when I collabed with them. This guy is throwing mad shade already. Just like Chaos said, I think he has something personal towards me. I don't know, I've never met this guy in my life. It didn't take long for McCrudden's comments to irritate her, particularly the references to her most viewed videos being sexually suggestive. She was offended that her success was attributed to her appearance rather than the substance of her content. She demands that people view her how she wants, and she hates criticism. This becomes evidence as the video progresses. Why is this relevant? You don't make a video before they were famous about PewDiePie and put in his biggest hater. SS Sniper Wolf is a phony. She is a fraud. Again, why is this in here? This is supposed to be about my childhood. Growing up, how I was in school to be a pharmacist before YouTube. How I started running my own business when I was 14 to help my parents pay bills. But yet you have the biggest hater. 
instead, you know, because that's so much more important than anything else. As a sniper wolf has decided to slander my name. It's not slender if it's true. Why does he keep talking about him? It has nothing to do with the video. Her disbelief that the Enigma Hood situation would be a part of her history further highlights her warped perception. If she had not released a video titled My Biggest Hater, cementing Enigma Hood's role in her YouTube career, McCrudden wouldn't have included it. The fact she is annoyed that drama is a part of her history is comical. Not only had she been consumed in drama for the past three months, but a big break also came from drama she instigated with Girl Gone Gamer. When she wasn't focusing on her studies, she was also getting involved in the world of cosplay, and I've learned myself from my bios on porn stars, sex certainly sells. And while she was pumping out these turbo sexy videos, she was also working at Hollister folding clothes, so you can understand the girl wanted to get her life. I started off YouTube uploading just cosplay videos, not sexy videos. This is how I started out my channel. These are my videos three years ago. It was almost all gameplay, mostly Rising and Black Ops 2. There is too much evidence of Leah's previous exploits as Sexy Sexy Sniper for her to deny its existence completely. Her admission of taking down Enigma Hood's video in 2013 is more than enough proof beyond the many archives of her previous content. She's unironically gaslighting everyone into believing otherwise. McCrudden was right, and described her earlier content accurately. However, what she doesn't include in her reaction is the part where he talks about the fact she started as Sexy Sexy Sniper. When she wasn't focusing on her studies, she was also getting involved in the world of cosplay and on YouTube with her original channel titled Sexy Sexy Sniper. Sexy Sexy Sniper, that's what I meant to say. I have a YouTube, it's Sexy Sexy Sniper. Getting a channel off the ground and building a following takes a shit ton of work. And I've learned myself from my bios on porn stars, sex certainly sells. And while she was pumping out these turbo sexy videos, she was also working at Hollister folding clothes. So you can understand, the girl wanted to get her life- I started off YouTube uploading just COD videos, not sexy videos. This is how I started out my channel. These are my videos three years ago. It was almost all gameplay, mostly Rising and Black Ops 2. It appeared as if McCrudden incorrectly described her earlier content, but with the power of editing, she cut it that way to change his meaning. But the next part sets her off completely. One game player certainly took an interest in her, a Call of Duty stud who went by the name X Remembrance. What? Why is he trying to make it seem like Sausage is this extra remembrance guy? If you go on Twitter and search extra remembrance, it's this guy called Ricardo and he was on MGO. Why is he trying to make it seem like Sausage is this guy? But we all know and love him today as Mr. Sausage. But it's not even him! How can you be so wrong in this video? There are a million YouTube videos out there of people calling this pair out on using his gaming skills and her mass appeal to team up and make the ultimate gaming ch- Oh my god! He is really gonna throw that out there. It doesn't matter. How many COD events I get invited to, how many live tournaments I've played in, how many streams I've done, how many hand cams I've done, you're gonna throw out the fake gameplay thing. Because it was a pretty savvy business move. He's saying my YouTube channel is a business between me and Sausage when I met Sausage after I started YouTube. After I was super good at Black Ops 2, uploaded a bunch of gameplay, then he messaged me on YouTube. And then we met up, this doesn't make sense. He's just trying to attack me. I used to think the claims of her faking her gameplay had no substance, so I ignored most of that conjecture in my original video. But I looked much deeper this time. McCrudden was on the cusp of a treasure trove of internet lore. However, the depths of his ability and the scope of his content ultimately left him with mud in his face, as Leah's defense was loaded enough to be accepted. Her internet history is well hidden, but as we've seen, there are plenty of archives. You just need to know where to look. So let me entertain this theory that Sausage was behind her earlier content. Leah suggests that Sausage could not be this ex-remembrance person based on a Twitter account with the same username. Coincidentally, the account had retweeted some Metal Gear Online tweets. She also states that she met Sausage after starting YouTube and uploading good Black Ops 2 gameplay. However, two years prior, she says something different. And I started 
started out uploading Black Ops 2 videos, and in February, Metal Gear Rising came out. Well, I got the game early, so I finished it in a day, and the next day, I ran it again and got a ton of videos ready. I uploaded a bunch of Rising videos, like all the boss fights, and they kind of blew up. Like, I got a bunch of views over the next few months on these videos, and they, like, gave my channel a boost. It's plausible that this is just a memory thing, but we will return to that video soon. The sausage theory originates after Leah had criticized Girl Gone Gamer. An archived IGN blog from the time outlines the reasons why her takedown was a case of hypocrisy. There's also a thread of tweets with the same information, wherein someone named XREM1217 is announcing a secret partnership with another channel. In 2008, X Remembrance was a very active user on the GameFAQs Metal Gear Online board, known as Itachi Shadow on the website. Rem was quite the character. He was active in this community and often engaged in banter with fellow players. There's some existing YouTube videos with him featured. He was also quite the troll. He managed to stir up some drama because he tricked a bunch of dudes into believing he was a girl. He broke the news that he was not. It was a joke many fell for. In this thread, he also reveals some very interesting information. He was bemused about how many people he fooled, as he had posted his full name on an MGO clan's website. That name? Evan John Young. But it's not even him! How can you be so wrong in this video? Ricardo and Evan are clearly not the same name, but to eliminate any coincidences, we have more to explore. Within the IGN expose are AOL instant messages between X Remembrance 1217 and a girl named Aura posted on Instagram. Leah is name dropped as the discussion revolves around credit, presumably for gameplay. But is this person the same as X Remembrance? Well, yes, according to Evan himself on GameFAQs. That is now two points of evidence confirming that Sausage is X Remembrance. Another piece is a description of a video posted by XREM1217 on YouTube, which suggests he was providing someone with gameplay. He also suggests he did the same thing with Leah in his comments. As well as this, Itachi Shadow also claims to hail from New York. This is what Leah said in her video discussing how she met Sausage. Like from 10 at night to six in the morning and because of time zones, it was like two, three hours ahead. So his sleep schedule was beyond messed up. He would talk to me all night and go to sleep at like nine in the morning and wake up at five in the afternoon. The only way this could be the case was if Sausage lived in the Eastern time zone. New York is in that time zone. I don't know about you, but all of this points towards the same thing. Finally, just to eliminate any doubt, the account XREM1217, presumably a new account for Itachi Shadow, was last active on January 19, 2013, the day SS Sniper Wolf was created. Coincidence? I think not! I don't even know how to speculate an alternate theory. She's lying. She's a fraud. What makes it worse is that she accused Girl Gun Gamer of doing the same thing, yet all the information points to her doing it too. McCrudden doesn't even mention how she blew up from the Girl Gone Gamer drama. He credited her gameplay. I feel like everything bad about my reputation is based on lies that other people have made up. Imagine if people made up lies about you and they attack you based on those lies and they don't know the real you. I feel like I'm not explaining that too good. I just feel like this video was very badly done. It wasn't even a before they were famous. A lot of it took place while I was doing YouTube and a lot of it revolved around drama. Why is this video so revolved around drama and lies about me? Uh, I guess drama and controversy and, like you said, sex sells. The foundations of her entire career are built on lies and deception, and her behavior reflects that of someone who knows they don't deserve the credit they were so often given. Taking credit for her ability is something she is adamant about. So when someone accused her of not being as good as she says she was, the response would be interesting. In February 2017, SylvieBot triggered one. I am in no way saying that she is bad at Overwatch. I am just showing proof regarding her lies throughout her Top 500 video. She's not terrible. She just didn't get to Top 500 as a DPS and tank main by herself. And the only reason I looked into this was because YouTube would not stop recommending me her Top 500 video. After watching it, I was impressed. I thought, damn, she's actually really good at Overwatch. All I knew about her playing Overwatch was just that 
she only played Reaper and DPS. But then I decided to look into it because of all the shit I found out about her in the past when using her as an example for my first video. She's still human, but I just can't stand that she's blatantly lying in her top 500 video. And so many people are falling for it. There's a huge number of reasons why she gets so much criticism. Sylviebot's video essentially argued that Leah was dishonest about how she made the top 500 in Overwatch Season 3, based on Leah's in-game stats and various stream VODs she had access to. Leah indirectly responded in the pinned comment of her top 500 video. She refutes Sylviebot's critiques, suggesting that her intentions were motivated by views and money. Fullscreen also attempted to take down Sylviebot's video. A few days later, Sylvie uploaded a response that refuted Leah's reply. Leah responded very similar to how she did with Enigma Hood in 2013. Without naming Sylviebot, she extensively defends herself against the critiques without actually clarifying any of the conjecture. Her friend Digital Next provided a plausible response that Sylviebot conceded on, whereas Leah was arguing with people in her replies. Leah also edited her comment after Sylvie's response, and her most recent iteration unsurprisingly lies about what Sylvie says, despite trying to suggest that Sylvie was lying. But then I decided to look into it because of all the shit I found out about her in the past when using her as an example for my first video. Which by the way, before making that video, I didn't know anything about her and had never watched any of her videos. This was a particular drama, rather than general outrage because it was Sniper Wolf. No one outside the Overwatch community would have noticed Sylvie's critiques, but Leah's response caught the attention and popularized her video. 2017 was also a massive year for drama content on YouTube. Jake Paul's Team 10 and FaZe Banks' Clout House were at war with one another, generating hundreds of millions of views. Rice Gum had fully capitalized on the diss track trend, and everyone was seemingly on the hunt for the next big drama. Leah seemed in the spirit too, deciding to drop names during a stream and making comments all too familiar with her attitude towards other women. What's your name, Melissa? Oh, uh, yeah. Yo, it's Melissa, like... Yeah. If you're not, like, he's boosting her, like, on YouTube. Like, just putting her yeah, in he everything. I know, he better- No, girl. but she's- yeah. I think she's dating her- his friend. Yeah, her roommate. Huh? She's just like, I'ma I'm just Yo, fuck everybody to get a free room. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is why I hate girls. <sighs> Everyone a hoe. Yeah. Hey, who's that new girl he has? Like, summer I don't or know. Is that a model? Oh my god, that's not a model. <laughs> if that's a model, my left toe can be a model. These comments were clipped and posted on Twitter. At the same time, Banks' temper was tested as he unleashed his rage upon Leah, who decided to entertain his anger. She instigated the drama. However, Banks was also responsible for it erupting further, initially accusing Leah of trying to get with him in the past, a roping Faye's sensor into the fray, suggesting he had a similar experience. Banks doesn't like that Sniper Wolf is talking crap about his girlfriend, so yeah, Banks is gonna go out there, he has so much ammunition on Sniper Wolf, she has this notorious reputation. LMAO, your boyfriend was texting me and was trying to hook up with me before he made you famous. Nice ass implants, by the way, at least mine is real. I forgot the fake boobs too. Nothing real about you. Peace. You are a fucking liar, and my bot is real. Look at that. It's real! You did text me and told me you think I'm cute and you would want to talk to me if you weren't in a relationship. But that's not my business. I'm not going to defend or attack you because I'm not interested in making people look bad. And that's the truth, guys. I really did not want to get involved in the situation. She wanted to talk to me. She said that she was in an abusive relationship and she couldn't get out of it. And this whole time, I never wanted to say a word about that, but oops, I just did. She responded with, when the F did I say this? LOL. I said, you called me crying and said Sausage, which is her boyfriend, has some dirt on you. And I said, listen, I don't want to get involved in your situation. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't affect me. I hope it all works out for you. Sensor's logs were contextualized in a another video where he goes to his local Verizon to recover his past text logs. Hi, you're cute. Would talk to you more if I wasn't in an abusive relationship I can't get out of. So when I saw abusive relationship, I thought this was a serious problem. I instantly said, after I scrimmed with my team, call me. And we talked on the phone and she cried to me. Following this video, the drama persisted when a figure exited the shadows and threatened censor with legal action. Leah has been talking to a lawyer. It took her a while as we were out of the country for almost three weeks. She has all the old phones, and there's some texts that aren't even when using recovery software to recover deleted texts or loading up her old laptops with iMessage. 
I don't like you and would normally be fine with her proceeding to sue, but I won't want you as part of my life for the next six to 18 months. So there's two options. After deciding to degrade every single woman she could, then trying to suggest the men criticizing her were only annoyed that she rejected them, her boyfriend decided to threaten censor with a lawsuit. Leah and Sausage can act big and mighty in public, but behind the scenes, they resort to threats to get what they want. Sensor's reputation and allegiances were enough for him to stand his ground, and Leah walked away from this with her tail tucked between her legs. Snipewolf's status as a gamer slowly diminished at the turn of 2018. Her move to exclusive reaction videos saw her presence within the community drop. Towards the end of the year, she found herself in a fight against Keemstar, one where she was actually on the right side of the argument. It also introduced us to a rising creator, one that stood against everything Snipewolf represented. Compared to Pokimane, the Snipewolf brand was toxic and reinforced the negative stereotypes she has often spoken out against. For Pokimane, to align her brand with Leah's was and still is confusing, but maybe there's more to it that exists offline. Leah was anything but kind to others. However, the hypocrisy of her negative comments towards other women has been explored very well. For a young woman with thinning eyelashes, who glues and paints parts of her face on, whose lips have been plumped so thoroughly that they look like a microwaved hot dog about to split its casing, who enlarges her corneas with contacts, who filters her blemished skin so hard that she looks like a cartoon by the time she's done. <laughs> it's a bit rich for her to be calling out other women for having had work done or calling them fake and then holding herself up above that. And look, if she didn't criticize other women relentlessly for doing these things, I don't think anyone would care that she does them. Nerd City went hard with this video. It looks like someone has clone stamped an overspray onto the wood, onto this dock here. It looks like someone has accidentally erased where the backside of her knee and thigh make contact with the wood. The leg and the dock are, have basically become one <laughs> thing. I can't imagine somebody would do this and think it looks legit and actually posts it on social media and people believe it. Considering she is one of the top 100 individual creators on YouTube, you would expect a more developed character as a role model for young, impressionable audiences. Leah won the Kids Choice Award for gaming two years in a row. How she qualified for that category without actually uploading any gaming videos is one of the biggest mysteries on the internet. But it's no secret that her audience consists of children, whose parents probably have no idea that the woman providing free babysitting services is one of the most controversial people on the website. She has often been labelled with different characterizations of intolerance based on what she says in her videos. On one occasion, people on Twitter criticised Leah for transphobic comments about a person in one of her videos. Excuse me, sir, there's a young man in here. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Okay, sorry, sir. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm so sorry. How dare I not ask you what you identify as? Did you just assume my gender? How dare you? Do you see my pink purse? <laughs> You gonna call me a sir? You see my pink shirt? You see this mascara? Are you gonna call me a sir? I'll show you a sir. Which is it? I need your corporate number now. Gets misgendered in a GameStop. Give me your corporate number. Let's let's fight over it. Not your regular ma'am. Like, okay, okay, I, I won't misgender you, okay? You're gonna have to calm down, sir. Oh my god, I did it again. Comment below. If you saw this person, is it a sir or a ma'am? I'm gonna tell the whole LGBT community about this. You will lose money. GameStop stock dropped to zero. Come on, man, that's like me putting my hair up and getting mad if people don't call me a guy. Whether that makes her transphobic is subject to opinion, but what she says echoes transphobic rhetoric, which resulted in many comments pointing it out. The video is still available, and you can see the criticism yourself. What you can't see is the clip, because she cut it from the video using the YouTube edit feature. She erased it, as if it never happened. 
So that's why I can understand why people would call her transphobic, because there was no attempt to acknowledge the criticism. When she can't erase something, she will deny it ever happened. The numerous screenshots Enigma had provided of her liking racist tweets towards him were simply waived because she didn't remember liking them. She can't completely remove Sexy Sexy Sniper from the internet, so she denies its existence. With good reason, because some of the things she said back then would be used to cancel her today. Take this comment from one of her earliest vlogs. Why is he the thing? Who is he? I don't know. Why is he? No, just look at him. Oh. Look, he's like buff and she's like... Oh, my hair's are ugly about makeup. She's bad. No, my hair looks red. Stow the hashtag for now. This was said in 2012. But it is a racist comment and shows how she has always found a way to criticize other women for their appearance. Also, accountability doesn't have an expiry date. You can't just delete something or pretend it never happened to avoid taking responsibility. There's no change without growth and you can't grow without learning. So it's not unreasonable for people to question Leah's values when she consistently strives to do anything but acknowledge her mistakes. Now I'm not gonna go off and tell you how to live or how I think of you like you did to me and other girls and a 12 year old, but rather I'm gonna sit here and maturely tell you that I do not agree with your video. Don't bring people down just because you don't agree with what they're doing to themselves. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people agree with the things you said in that video and even if there's validity and truth to it, it's not your place to bring attention to that, call attention to that, and put all these girls in this negative light on such a large platform. One of the girls is 12 years old. Come on, imagine, imagine her going to school at that age and everyone saying, oh, I just saw you on Sniper Wolf's video and imagine the bullying she's gonna get in school. So because I won't take down my response video, she is basically blackmailing me and harassing me and calling me bad names. Sniper Wolf responded on her own Insta story saying, quote, don't preach about bullying if you're going to use your audience to bully someone you don't like. It's Leah's world. We just live in it. Well, the people in front of us are trying to do this challenge too because we've been waiting here for like 20 minutes and they're trying to get it under a certain amount. They've swapped out like five, six things right now. They swiped the card. That's a good sign. I'm getting impatient. So this annoyed me. The audacity to number one, film this random family that's trying to buy groceries and make it work with their real life budgets. And I can only imagine what it's like to have the added discomfort of an impatient woman behind you having herself and you filmed. Wake up and stop being trash. At least censor the people you're dissing. This time, she actually responded. The problem wasn't that they didn't have money. I mean, if that was the case, if they were struggling with money and they were taking a long time, I would have pulled out my wallet, I would have paid for it, no problem. But how people see this and try to like switch the story around to make it seem like I'm the bad guy, of course, of course, it gets the views, right? Okay, so I watched the clip again and I feel like what the part that people took wrong was when I said, they were trying to get it under a certain amount. I feel really bad that anybody would have taken this the wrong way. Because I feel like if anybody knows me, they know that I'm I'm not like that at all. Like if anybody is struggling, I see somebody like holding up the line because they're struggling, like I will obviously pay for it. So you feel bad because people took it the wrong way. Leah has changed, but it's not character related, rather situational. Because of everything that's been discussed up to now, it's no surprise that she has decided to step back from the social side of social media. Now that she's not calling everyone an idiot on Twitter, there's less chance she opens herself up to scrutiny, which has had a positive result, as there have been very little controversy surrounding her brand. That being said, this is Sniper Wolf. Who's your favorite person you follow on TikTok? Sniper. She's like a really big YouTuber. <laughs> Who's nice. that? Sniper Wolf. You, you don't know, know about her. We gotta show oh, her. You gotta put, you gotta put me on. Appreciate you for coming. I'll come with Sniper Wolf thing for you. That's crazy. I'm gonna try to get in touch with her. I know some people who know her, so hopefully we can make it happen. Wait, really? Leah was in contact with Kiara, and all she had to do was donate some of her time to a fan. All was well. Until it wasn't. Keemstar, still in the fest of spirit, dropped a thread claiming that Leah was ghosting Kiara and hadn't talked to her. I just saw the goddamn text messages between SS Sniper Wolf and the mom making a date of when to do this and a time when to do this and she just blew it off like, you have to be a certain piece of shit 
to fucking do this. Like you are such a fucking scumbag. If, if you see this at all, make the FaceTime call right now because the kid is literally dying right now, you piece of shit. Leah argued with Keem and a few others until she posted a screenshot of a conversation with Kiara the next day. Two egomaniacal internet celebrities decided that a dying girl was the subject to continue their long-lasting feud. She did at least try to contact Kiara, but her mother's frustration with Leah's lack of urgency was understandable. The situation from each side was disgusting. Keem only cared about this because he could use it against Leah. Likewise, she only prioritised it when her brand was dragged through the mud. She could have set a date and time to make a call, it's not a monumental task. But the fact they both used a dying girl to generate interaction on Twitter is plain evil. Not exactly an exemplar of compassionate behaviour towards a family suffering a great deal of pain. Chiara probably had no idea what was happening. She just wanted to talk to her favourite YouTuber, so it's good that she got what she wanted. Steppelwolf is a brand that is appealing to advertisers, but not other creators. In 2018, she was invited onto Good Mythical Morning, with the preview posted on March 13. Within hours, it was removed after receiving a strong dislike ratio. The episode featuring her never aired. Her reputation was disruptive for other creators, and her isolation was enforced rather than a choice. Valkyrie tweeted that she had played Fortnite offstream with Pokimane and Leah, suggesting that it was a nice time and that she was able to get to know her personally. However, the tweet was quickly deleted after she was met with comments questioning her choice to associate with Leah. Valkyrie responded to people commenting about it, claiming she didn't know Leah's history, suggesting she doesn't want controversial comments from the tweet. Leah's reputation is so poor that she has created an issue for other creators simply playing a game with her. Those who aren't invested in a relationship with Leah are pressured to cut contact, or at least any public recognition of her, which is, unfortunately, the only level of accountability people can enforce on her. Annoy those who associate with her. Being ostracised from what was her community, the genre that she was a part of building, must hurt. But it's hard to sympathise with her, considering it was her fault that she was driven away from the others. But she's probably not losing any sleep. Snipe Wolf has become a regular fixture on YouTube's front page. Despite not being able to interact with her colleagues publicly, she doesn't need their influence to help sustain her channel. The years in isolation have been positive for her YouTube career. She has to be given credit for the consistency of her content over this time, because uploading the same monotonous videos must be creatively draining. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Expecting oh, shit. shit to change. That is crazy. Hello friends, it's me. But if it's not broken, why fix it? The consistency has led to her becoming a recognized figure online. Sure, it may be due to the girl with this thumbnail meme, but the persistence of her content beyond personalized delivery cemented and propelled her channel further up the rankings. She benefited from the global lockdown. Unlike most, her channel blossomed with the increased traffic flocking to online sources of entertainment. During this time, her videos would average at least 10 million views, a significant number to consistently achieve. Although it seems any bridges with other creators have all but been burned, she recently signed a long-term contract with G Fuel. Drink the fuel! Time to record videos, play some games. I actually take this before I go to the gym. Have you seen these games? It actually gives me energy. Maybe in a month or two, there'll actually be something there. You just gotta feel it. Snipewolf's partnership with G Fuel isn't entirely new, having been a part of their sponsorship program in her earlier days. Ready, set, go. Considering her history and the issues she has had with some of G Fuel's former partners, it's interesting to see them make this move. Considering what was said in their press release, they are clearly looking to capitalize on the constant stream of Snipewolf viewers. A very smart business decision. But let's be honest, 
morality has never been at the forefront of G Fuel's minds. And after being assured that no one would be losing their jobs, but once they started complaining to HR about what that upper figure did say, then, without warning, seven people were laid off. SS Snipe Wolf is a YouTube institution. The further you look, the more clear it is how toxic and opportunistic her character was, veiled behind the pearly veneers of an endorsed creator, specially handpicked to lead a platform forward. All she needs to do is acknowledge her past and hold herself accountable for it. But with all institutions, the admittance of failure weakens its image, and image is all she cares for. Snipewolf's isolation has ultimately put her name out of people's minds and mouths, to her benefit. It begs the question of how long a person's past behaviour can be excused, and whether there's an expiry date for accountability. The bullying, manipulation, misuse of copyright and disregard for decency may all be in the past, but there is no precedent to suggest that she has developed as a person. All she's done is disconnect from places like Twitter, and rarely interacts with creators outside her circle. That's not enough to accurately assess her character. She no longer represents gaming, nor does that community regard her as someone with influence in its structure. She's evolved into a leading creator, YouTube promotes her and invites her to many exclusive events. The question remains, how can anyone realistically trust her when everything she has said has been a lie? Every other creator on this platform must address their history at some point in their career. Why she's the exception is one of the only things to be determined. Hopefully this video has been insightful. None of this information is new, nor is it impossible to find. But only time will tell if she takes action and moves towards acknowledging her past, apologizing to all she impacted. Until then, we will continue to document reminding everyone of what she has done. This has been part three. Thank you for watching. I'm